Hey guys, Western Mine Detective here coming at you with another mine exploring and ghost town exploring video. So we're out here and we're actually going to be doing a three day, maybe three and a half day uh, backpacking trip. Uh, I got my buddy Johnny with me and uh, the Jeep. Uh, we actually put a tarp on it because I don't want it just in case it rains or something. Don't want all that water and dust getting in there. But we will be headed up this wash, up to the peaks up there, and uh, hopefully uh, we could get up to one of the cabins up there um, in about maybe six hours. So let's get up there. All right, so we're about a mile into the hike and we're just at the mouth of the canyon right here. And uh, looking right here, this is about a 15 foot wash. I'm standing on the bank right now, but it completely missed the road. The road's right here, maybe further up, but yeah, that's pretty damn crazy. This is obviously from all the recent heavy rains that we've had, but uh, yeah, we will continue trekking upward. All right guys, continuing up, we got the wash right here. Bunch of big boulders. Uh, the road washed about probably a quarter mile ago. But right over here to the left, we actually got like a wooden structure right there and a tailings pile. So there's definitely some uh, mining remains in this area, but we might check that out on the way back. But for now, we're gonna continue hiking way up there, the peaks behind there. All right guys, so right here we actually came across an old can and bottle dump. Uh, that looks like an old coffee can, probably Hills Brothers coffee. Just a regular old can right here. There's a good bit of cool stuff right up here. I'll get the top off and then uh, that's an old Clorox bottle top you can see that's cork cork top so that one probably dates to around the 1920s or so we got a really amethyst colored glass right here it's pretty cool and I think the coolest thing up here is this old galvanized steel bucket so get them out of stuff up here and uh, we'll continue hiking on All right, so here's a look at the back side of that pile. There's that one bigger pile and then there's another one to the right. And uh, we just noticed that there's some cable coming down right here. And that other structure is most definitely a tram tower. So right down here probably got collapsed after all these years, but there's probably a lower tram tower here and the road would have went up this wash. So the trucks would have probably hauled the ore from this point all the way down. Guys, right here, we got this awesome waterfall in Death Valley, a very rare, oh my god, very rare sight. That is refreshing. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> She's cold. All right guys, so here we got Johnny, the daredevil, 
going up to the upper tiers of this wall. Oh my god, that's a lot of rock wall. <laughs> hey, let me know if you see any, uh, you see anything in Tosser? Yeah, I'm gonna go a little bit. There's okay. Alright. Wow, man. All right guys, so we just achieved this ridge and uh, came around this corner and we got this beautiful view of that peak. Not sure if that's the 11,001 that we're headed up to. That just might be a fall summit. The one we're headed to might be behind there. But uh, I forgot to mention that the main objective for uh, this video is to get up to the peak, which like I said is at 11,000 feet and to also uh, get to the cabin, which is beyond the peak. Um, and that's where we're gonna set camp for this first night. And then uh, I'll give you a quick tour of that cabin in the morning. And then after that, that'll pretty much be the end of the video. And then the next part will be uh, showing other cabins and uh, also the ghost town, which is our ultimate objective. So let us keep hiking up. All right guys, last rays of sunlight setting on the mountains. So yeah, that's definitely our uh, our goal. That's the peak right there. We're obviously a good distance away from there. We gotta go along that way, hit that ridge, ride a roller coaster, and then go back up. And then the cabin obviously is behind the peak. So we got a good ways to go, but we will get there eventually. Alright, so I haven't really recorded in a while, but we made it to what looks like a cabin site. There's a very flat spot right here and some uh, timbers right there. But right here we got two antique bed frames. This one's still got the springs and it's all, <laughs> it's all springy still. And then there's even a little paint can right next to it but uh yeah it's pretty damn cool and then right over here there's a uh, fire circle and it looked like there was pieces off an old stove right there there's another piece right here on the ground but uh yeah we will continue up we're uh, almost to the cabin, just gotta get to the peak and then just walk down the ridge and we'll be there. Alright guys, so we made it to this uh, camping spot 
Uh, unfortunately, we didn't make it to the cabin tonight, but we'll uh, get there uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, but right now, I'm going to be eating some supper. I got these Mountain has uh, meals. This one is beef stew, so I'm letting it sit for five minutes and then just got to stir it again and then pretty much ready to eat. Got the fire here, firing. Uh, I just boiled the water in here. Yeah, got a pretty pretty comfy setup right here. Gonna lay down my uh, sleeping pad right there in the sleeping bag and fall asleep like a baby. All right, guys. So it's seven in the morning. Just woke up. We're on the side of the mountain, just below eleven thousand feet. As you can see, there's still some snow up here. But man, look at that beautiful view looking down into the valley. And the sun just rising. There's a lot of a good bit of good bit of snow still on this slope. Wow. So beautiful and the peak that we're going to go to is right there. So uh yeah, we're going to get all packed up and head up there. All right guys, finally made it up to the top of the peak. Right here we got the register. Already signed it and all that. But yeah, super awesome views from up here. You see the valley below. And uh, we'll be going down one of these ridges on this uh, east side, checking out a couple cabins and of course a ghost town, which I'll probably show you guys in either the second or third part of this uh, series but uh yeah let's get on there All right, guys, so we're just hiking along this ridge, uh, going on to that cabin, and we stumbled across these pieces off of a very old cast iron stove. Definitely looks in indicative of like an 1800s era. Well, um, there's actually a manufacturer name on this one. Looks like it says Southard Robertson and Company 257 and 259. Water Street, New York. And then these are really cool. The doors still open and have the locking mechanisms. Look at how intricate those designs are. So cool. There's a blue enamelware plate. And just some more pieces of the stove. Pretty awesome find right there. Alright, so lo and behold, we just walked around the corner and right up against this tree we got a bunch of uh, old timbers. Got this fully intact shovel. Probably dates to the 20s or 30s, I would guess. And more pieces probably off of the same stove. One here, one here, and some more modern stuff. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. We're thinking the cabin might have been like right here, considering there's a pretty flat spot, but awesome finds right there.
All right guys, so this is pretty insane. I've been hiking for quite a while. Uh, we actually almost ran out of water, but it looks like this is my savior. So this is actually a very old well, as you can see. It's full of water, has that old metal ladder right there. Even some timber supports right here. And they just carved into the stone for this one. Look like at this, there are just so many artifacts here. You got a shovel, looks like a a pump, water pump. Um, that looks like an ore bucket, but they probably repurposed that for getting water out of this well. This is crazy stuff. Ooh, almost fell. Oh wow, and we even got some uh, initials here, WG. Looks like LG and JG. And here's a look at this, closer look at this water pump. So that looks like uh, something Connecticut. This is actually such a crazy find. Closer look at this shovel. Got some timbers here. Oh man, look at that. Definitely gonna filter that out because it looks pretty nasty. Here's the ore bucket that was repurposed. And I just did a pretty grueling hike <sighs> going down this uh, Norley Canyon. I wish I had my uh, machete with me. Uh, I got a sledgehammer here. That's pretty damn old. We got this hook and pulley. This is some amazing stuff. Got a couple barrels right there. I'm just in awe how much stuff is left behind here. I've never seen a video or anybody cover any of these uh any of these sites, especially this one. There's a huge enamelware pot. Got these things kind of look like treasure chests, but they're not. It looks like they were probably used to hold the water. Probably water, actually. That looks like one of those... Uh, Things that they use to clean themselves. Uh, forgot what they're called. Man, I'm clumsy today, huh? <sighs> yeah, there's another bucket. Pretty much all this stuff looks like it was used to hold the water. And over right here we got. Looks like a hoist or something. Got some cable here. So I'm pretty sure this was used to. Uh, get the water buckets out you know crank it right here and then cable would have spooled around here like so and there's just a lot more stuff but definitely got to get a move on but I'm definitely glad we found water and I'm definitely glad that I found this site who would have known yeah this is awesome All right, so here I am standing on the ladder of this very old well. And that is really crazy. You can literally see the metal rungs going all the way down. I don't know how deep this thing is, but I'm gonna guess at least 20, 30 feet. Uh, kinda sucks that we gotta use this water, but I mean, this is a survival situation. Like we only had like half a liter each so and we definitely need more than that so I'm gonna fill up this hydration pack call it a day 
All right, guys, we did some more hiking, and right here we got an old stone chimney, and we actually got remnants of old cast iron stove. Looks like a boot heel plate with the nail still in it. A couple cans, and then right back here, we got another really cool find. So this right here is a gold crushing arastra. So this one would have had grindstones right here. That big one might actually be a grindstone. Actually does look like it because there's a little hole right here. And then there's another grindstone. So how this would have worked is this uh, pole right here in the middle would have probably been up to here and usually if it's really old it would have been mule powered so the mules would have walked around and then the stones would have been rubbing against this very flat surface right here you can see how smooth that is and then they would have crushed the gold ore and then uh I believe mercury, a mixture of mercury and water would have uh, kind of processed the ore. Then it would have came out. I'm not sure if this is the ore feeder or if this is, kind of looks like this is the ore feeder. But there's a big rock blocking it now. But yeah, that is one super awesome find. You can see the walls of it all along there. Some of them have fallen in. But yeah, this thing definitely dates to late 1800s, very early 1900s. So that is a really awesome find. And then uh, there's a couple artifacts right over here I'd like to show. And then, uh, We'll get on to the cabin, so... Oh, there's actually writing on this one. I have to check that out. It kind of looks like part of a stove. Like part of the trim. Okay, so this thing says number three and a half. Alright, what does that say? Looks like it says John... John Savory's... Sun. New York. What was that? John Savory's Sons, New York. So yeah, it's a very old top of a cast iron thing. And then whatever this is. Kind of looks like a makeshift saw blade, but I don't even know. Alright, yeah, let's continue on. <sighs> Alright guys, after such a long hike, we've made it to the cabin. There's something interesting right here. Oh, I'm not sure what that is. Interesting nonetheless. Look at that beautiful thing. Thankfully these recent uh, heavy rains haven't messed it up. Doesn't seem. There's a smokestack. For the fireplace. And here's the front. Wow. There's a lot of cool stuff down here. There's the other window. Yeah, yeah, this thing's dope as hell. Got a couple of miscellaneous artifacts around here. 
course, a pretty old, looks like a horseshoe. And we'll go uh, check out the inside right now. All right guys, so here's the interior of the cabin. I was so tired last night, so I just fell asleep. So I didn't get to show it. Here we get a little art installation type deal. Looks like baking powder. Top of the can, some quartz, purple glass. And then this looks like the frame to an ore bucket actually. Yeah, that's what that is. You could tell that this thing's hand forged, the iron. That's a really cool find. And just some other old stuff. Some really cool stuff on top of the uh, fireplace right here. We got a sheep skull, very ornate flower on this cast iron stove door. We got this, looks like another piece off the stove, probably the top. Really cool design on there. Uh, let's see, so that says Belleville Stove Works, based out of Belleville, Illinois. That's got to be pretty old. And then probably the oldest piece out of here. So that says patented June 20th, 1854. So that probably came from the the ghost town site, which was established in the 1870s, but I'm sure there's some older stuff. Steel cut coffee. There's a pretty cool top off a coffee can. And there's a lot more artifacts and such all over here. Some newer supplies that um, people have brought out here to renovate the cabin. Some old purple glass here. And some aqua glass with a lot of bubbles. Really nice blue enamelware plate and uh, What the hell are these called? Pop. Some more aqua glass. There's a lot of cool stuff to see. I think the coolest is this Ingersoll Rand porcelain sign. That is pretty awesome. I wonder if that came off of like a compressor. Even got this uh, thermometer. Looks like it says that it's 62 degrees, it looks like. And an old mule shoe. Very skinny. You can tell that's from a mule, not a horse. Oh yeah, and we got a whole bunch more stuff here. So, I guess the horse died with this shoe still in its hoof. So, there's a hoof in the shoe. Here's a boot heel plate. Some pieces of quartz with copper minerals in it. Broken mule shoe. Part off a mason jar. Another shoe. Lots of those out here. And let's check out this is like the tool section. Lots of newer shovels, sledgehammer, uh, earth beaters is what I call these. Yeah. Flatten the ground with that. Ooh, got this hammer slash wedge combo. Got a 
Decently old hatchet, looks like. A saw. Got this sledgehammer without the handle. Got this broken, probably a pick on this side that looks like hammer right there. Got this pretty old two man saw right here, but it looks like it's got new wood. Pretty awesome. There's also this stove, Wyco is the brand. Pretty much all intact. Got the legs and everything. So some more stove parts down here looks like. Got some old china pottery. Ironstone china. There's a, ooh, here's part of a, uh, what are these called again? Dang, I'll think of it. My bad guys had a brain fart. This is what they call crucibles. This is where they would have put the ore in and uh, processed the ore. They would have had very hot coals and such under there. Uh, so this is a Prince Albert. Lots of those. Very cool piece of china right there. Nice blue glaze. And then mm -hmm, this is ironstone extra quality, it looks like. A lot more tools here. We got a can of lard compound. Looks like this is. N.K. Fairbanks and Company. Got that old pen. Ooh, looks like I got a tobacco tin under that lard. Very old, probably from the 1910s. Got another one of these hammer picks. Lots of single jacks, a couple of them here. Oh, and there's a intact, intact pick. And pretty much the last section is right over here. You got a bunch of these artifacts. Got another shoe right there, a couple of mule shoes right there. And then these four are actually uh, log cabin syrups. So I think these smaller ones, those are way more common, but I've never seen a big size like that. So that's pretty cool. Couple of, like kerosene and oil cans all over. Got some old utensils in here. Just a whole array of cool stuff. Another tobacco tin. Another tobacco tin. Couple of bottles here. And that's probably one of the coolest Permatex concentrated one shot antifreeze. Looks like probably part of a meat grinder. Another bottle. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot more stuff here too. Got another one of those picks. Oh yeah. And there's even stuff down here. Got some more stove parts. Very old riveted shovel. That one definitely dates to the 1800s. You can tell with this design right here. But yeah, lots of awesome artifacts out here.
There's little pins and chain. And of course, a couple old bed frames. We got this one and the one in that corner. That's where I slept last night. But now we're going to head to the main ghost town. Uh, but on the way out, I'll uh, probably do the outro. I guess so we're heading down the trail headed to the 1870s ghost town and that pretty much concludes a course of mule shoe right there lots of artifacts along this route but that pretty much concludes this video it was a I think it's longer than usual but there's lots of stuff to see getting up to the peak and uh, Checking out the cabin and all that. But uh, yeah, pretty much it. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, and then the next one will be part two of this series, which will be the ghost town and the cabin that we'll be staying at tonight. So you guys stay tuned for that one. But hope you guys enjoyed this one. Please like and subscribe. And thank you for watching.